G'day. Well, it's not really a good day. Uh, I've had to edit this into the video because my wife has just had a discussion with uh, one of the women next door, or one over this side, and uh, she was going off about the amount of noise I've been making for the last year or so. And there, she is saying that she and a few other people have had enough. Um, and there's an intimation that she's going to get the authorities involved and uh, have them have a go at me for working without a work permit, which is I'm not working because I'm just partaking in a hobby. But this may be the last video for a while. I'm actually half, half well, most of the way through uh, the next project after this one, but I'm going to have to curtail that for a while. So uh, enjoy this one. It could be a little while before I put another one up. I may after having added adding all these additions over Christmas have to pack up and move somewhere else uh, if I want to continue doing this. So enjoy this video. I hope you do, and uh, we'll get on with it. especially like to welcome my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content on my channel. If you missed the last video, there's a link up there now, you can go watch that first. Uh, in this episode we're going to be machining up the little joystick components for my mate who printed up the bracket the camera's sitting on at the moment. So uh, follow me over the bench and we'll, I'll show you what, or how small they are and just how they're supposed to work. Alrighty, this new uh, overhead unit's awesome for doing this sort of stuff. Righty, so this is, uh, these are the two components, these two here, that I have to make. They actually sit down inside a, a, an entire joystick unit, and this one has to be a neat fit in here. This, this printed one he made is too loose in there, it needs to be quite a tight fit in there. And it's just, has hardly any movement in it, but it's got a big joystick sitting on the top of it to, to wobble around with. He tells me that these little flats in here have some little tiny electronic bits attached to them and even the slightest movement will register so that's what I'm going to do so what I'll do is I'll machine this up first and then make this to fit that and then we'll put it in the mill and uh, mill these flats in it alrighty so I thought I'd try an overhead shot first up alright so what I'm going to do is drill this out just using this to 10 millimeters, which is what that is and then I'm going to stick a 10 millimeter end mill up in there to flatten the bottom off then we'll turn the OD and uh, bore the inside with a little cardboard boring bar to the, the right dimension. Alright, so if you're wondering why I decided to drill it with that, it has a little tiny chamfer in the bottom of the hole way up in the top there, so I thought uh, I measured inside the other one, I just uh, take it up in there marked it so I could tell how deep to go and then when I when I bore it out hopefully that the, the chamfer will still be there because I've got to drill it yet. Alrighty so I'll uh, change this tool over and we'll get on with it. Yeah it doesn't look too bad it'll right. do that. Uh, I forgot to tell you I had to play around with uh, everything to do with this DRO this morning. I wrapped most of the cables in aluminium foil and I pulled the, uh, well, we can see it in the camera, pulled this apart and cleaned it out. I found one tiny little bit of swarf in there, I don't know whether that's uh, a problem or not. But at the moment, it's behaving itself. So, uh, fingers crossed, that's where we're at. And it's going to play ball with me now instead of doing what it was doing before. Alrighty, I'll just turn this, gotta turn the outside of this down to uh, 14 millimetres. Let's see what we got there. 15.7. I'll zero that. Been like Main Street here today, the amount of bikes coming up and down the street is just unreal. Uh, and a neighbour drilling holes and vacuuming before, unreal. So far, so good on the next XDRO. It didn't budge, not one 
little seal we've got here. Went through this went spot on too. Right. What we've done there, that's a bit much. No, it's what it should be. It's what the DRO is telling me it should be. Which is good. I know I can rely on it. I've never turned anything with a DRO before and uh, I'm having a little trouble getting used to this. So half a millimetre has got to come off that. So if I go in 0.25 of the 0.87 Oh, that's a right set should be 14 millimetres. Let's see how they went. Oh, it's a bit under. Next we turn the tape, that's 14, 13, 9, 9 at the back, 13, 9, 5 at the front and lower. I don't think this outside dimension is overly critical, but I might just do a, a pass back there without moving anything and see how we go. Alrighty, so I've delivered that, so it's time to bore it out. Alrighty, so I've zeroed out my X and my Z on the DRO, so we'll see how we go. quite go deep enough with that end mill when I went in there because I was just about to stop it at 21.6 and I should have been able to go to 21.9 and hit the bottom and I'm just I'm running out of uh, out of grind on here too so anyway we'll uh, keep going see how we go it did give me a little license to uh, to modify this uh, marginally to get what I need I think I'll bring it back when I'm done. Battery's going flat anyway. Alrighty, so while you weren't looking, I drilled a 5mm hole in that and uh, just started a part off there so I can put a little chamfer on it and we'll part this thing off. With my new homemade party tool. There she goes. And if I've got that sharpened properly, should be no tit on the back of it, or little to the nose, none. Look at it, beautiful, no tit on the back. Alrighty, that's that part done. Alrighty, so uh, it was coming up to lunch time and I thought I'd, I'd save you some of the boring stuff, having to sit through it, and I spent forever machining that down from 12, 12 mil to three mil because I was a little worried about as it got smaller and smaller, snapping the damn thing off, but it took forever. Just before I go any further, if you're not a fan of this straight over the top shot, and I did a bit of editing at lunchtime, and I've got to admit I'm not a fan of it. So if you're not a fan of it, put it down in the comments and let me know. I think this view, this view I'm using here now, uh, is a better view looking down and towards it. I think that camera's actually fallen down a bit. I stand on my tippy toes to see. Yeah, I think it has. Maybe I'll tighten his ball up. Oh, maybe it'll stay in place now. Alrighty, so we'll get on with this. Um, I just worked out a few measurements. These readouts are sitting exactly where they should be, so uh, it's all pretty groovy. I'm, I'm liking this. I don't know you ever got by without a Z uh, measurement. Minus 29.3, okey dokey. Right, I just need to check where I am. I take two millimeters off that. I wonder why this is sticking out so far. I want to be able to grip this in a collet when I, uh, in the mill, when I machine those flat. Now, after spending as long as I did machining that down, I don't want to mess this up. Another mill will come off. That's funny about these little DROs I've got. They don't, uh, they don't tell you what size it is. It just tells you how much you've taken off it. So another half a mill. Last one was just a nice slow spring pass. Let's see what the micrometer tells me. Like I said, I've got a little bit of leeway in these. I don't think. Uh, 
Yeah, he's tied over, so by the time I polish that on, eh? Yeah. yeah. Just that spot on. I don't know whether you can see that or not. Just polish that up a little, get that damn tool out of the way. Machine for on that front edge there. So that, that should be the finished turn except to part it off when I'm done. But the main little question is how much of an interference fit is that going to be in there? A bit too tight at the moment. I think it's got to, got to be a fairly tight fit in there so that when when this is pushed on after it's been machined it has, it has to flex. It can't move in the base. So I don't know. I might leave that like that until the, he's away today. I'll be back tomorrow. Get him down there and and have a look and see how tight a fit he wants to make it. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give it a great big thumbs up and smash it. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And uh, if you'd like to become a patron, I'd be really thankful for that. And also have a little look at that thanks button down the bottom. You can make the occasional contribution. It, uh, it kind of helps. Everything's getting so expensive now. Alrighty, so, uh, so my mate was away a day longer than he was. But, uh, I think shit happens. Uh, I've, and he's been here this morning and he stood there, I didn't film it because uh, he was standing where the camera is right now watching me do this. But we've uh, got the first, the front part of it done and uh, I wasn't sure how much this had flexed but it, it actually flexes quite nicely. But anyway, we'll, uh, I've run out of uh, WD-40 so uh, that shop opens in about 10 minutes so I'll get down the road and get another can of that before I get started on that back end. Alrighty, so I've been down the road and got some more uh, WD-40 so we'll get on with this. So that's that half of it done. Flip this thing over and do the other side. I can stop holding my breath now. These webs here are only a millimetre thick and these ones are only a one and a half mil. And, uh, Believe you me, there's not a lot there. The, the last few cuts on the first pass were singing quite a bit. That's why I was laying into it so much with the with the lube. Now they're actually eight millimeters wide. I contemplated cutting them with an eight millimeter cutter. I thought no, I don't want a chance of grabbing it and tearing the end off it. So I've used a six mil and then uh, cut one pass and then moved over slowly two millimeters and finished it off. But anyway, I'll get that out of there and give a quick look. A lot of deburring to do. I'm glad we've got it now to this point, it's just about done. Well viewers, there they are, there we have it. Well, I'm really pleased with how that went. Um, that's a pretty delicate part, that, um, it's akin to a couple of little valve components I used to make out of brass in the day so relief pressure relief valve I used to make for a guy who made uh, diving gear that was run from a compressor that gets pushed up in the end of that and uh, I was a little concerned I was telling him this morning I didn't think you know wasn't sure that that would flex and all that much but that, he said it doesn't have to flex much but it flexes um, nicely beautiful well there it is done finished I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me make this and um, you'll come back next week for what's up next. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.